taking elements of home life that you might have had in suburbia, open the doors and have some plants and a sense of kind of greenery and, and nature in an elevated context, I think is, is, is quite attractive. I'm Hamish Monk, uh, one of the directors at Monk McKenzie. The site for this project is on Jervois Road in Herne Bay. Jervois Road is uh, one of the many arterial routes from Auckland CBD. The road and the, the buildings are situated on a ridgeline. It's afforded pretty spectacular panoramic views uh, all the way from the city back out to the Waitakere's and over the Waitamata. I'm Liam and this is Sophie and we're from Artifact Property. We're a family run business. Liam's background is in development and mine is in architecture. So it's north facing site sitting high on the ridge line in Hearn Bay. Hearn Bay is a, a leafy suburb with beautiful beaches, beautiful restaurants, cafes, design stores. The brief evolved, you know, uh, over a period of time through design workshops. The general premise was that it would be a, a, a residential led uh, mixed use development. I have an architectural background, Liam has the development background, so we were looking for an architecture firm that would offer us a unique approach. It's a bit of a, a jigsaw puzzle, it's only 500 square metres with um, 15 metres of street elevation and to do that in a kind of interesting format with commercial at the base and quite luxury uh, residential units above. The architecture is a, for us is about contributing in a positive way to Auckland's built environment and, and for us that's providing something that's simple and elegant and, and ages really well. Eight, eight apartments, so when you look at the building from the, the street it was important that the, the lobby had a sense of address to the street and it's obvious where you, you kind of enter and it's framed by two kind of solid blade walls. A small 100 square metre commercial unit on the left, two apartments over three floors and then a penthouse suite on the top. So the apartments have been cleverly planned where you enter through the door and it's a really unique approach where we have this winter garden deck which is quite unique so you feel quite open as soon as you enter an apartment. It's quite nice to have that long view from the point of entry. Also allowed us to push the dining area further back into the plan instead of pushing it towards the view, which is a, a slightly different kind of spin on how you might typically plan apartments. We've kind of separated the different functions, so to the southern end there's the bedrooms and the private spaces. One of the challenges I guess of having bedrooms to the street is the interface between the public domain and the, the need for a private space. So I guess the kind of screen to the street helps us deal with that in a, in a quite innovative way. Varying degrees of transparency and opacity depending on you know, where you view it from. So from, from the bedrooms, when you've got that direct sight line through the screen and it's quite open through the centre, uh, you know, you've got great views out to the context. But when you're down on the street, the oblique view looking up is quite opaque and, and quite interesting. To the north we've got the more social spaces, so the dining room, the living and the enclosed deck which is an amazing opportunity to sit outside but also to be sheltered in winter. For an apartment it really feels quite spacious. The, the site, as I mentioned, is quite narrow, so it's 15 metres and we've got two apartments per floor and it's 33 odd metres kind of long. And the longest part of the program, I guess, is the, the kitchen, so it made sense to align that on that kind of party wall condition where you can, one, look out to the view on one side and then back through the, through the winter garden on the other side. There's something quite attractive about having the functionality of a decent sized house and a well-specced kitchen. So the material palette incorporates natural stone, natural oak, and a lot of metalwork. We selected the dark bronze brass, and that continues throughout the project. We used it through range hoods and through these custom island benches that we built in New Zealand with a local manufacturer. The natural stone, we chose a ocean grey marble. The key with choosing um, a stone is you've got to live with it for a long time, so I think it's a balance between a lot of movement and the colour, and it, this ocean grey offered us that. I think it's a good balance between the natural and, and the new. 
The upstand, the island bench, was a key feature of the space. We didn't want it to be too flat, so a natural slate is really amazing. It gives a lot of undulations and softness. Part of the de design of the kitchen was these vertical modular elements and repetition of the batten handle. So we needed to incorporate that with the appliances and that's why we selected the vertical column fridge freezer. We could just have that 600 module continuous with the ovens stacked next to each other and wine fridge. You don't really want the appliances to take um, prominence. That's where Fish and Pike appliances have worked really well here. They're really minimal and clean and they work well with the dark stain of the oak and the aesthetics we wanted. Might sound like cliche, but you know, it was a really good collaborative process. You know, quite often there's a lot of complexity in buildings. It's quite often a sweet spot where you can tie things together and, and find a real kind of nuanced and poetic solution to a lot of complexity. We do feel extremely proud of this project. We've put a lot of heart and soul um, into this project. And, and to walk up the street and people looking and saying, hey, well, that's a really, really great project. And all the positive comments we've had, we feel really proud.